Kale, farmer Dre back at it. If you guys didn't know, I am a first generation fruit farmer out in Southwest Missouri. We grow apples, peaches, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, and all kinds of other produce, tomatoes, and good stuff like that. So if you guys are interested, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But in today's video, I am out here in our high density apples. We are tying up the trees, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we are doing that. So if you guys are familiar with the high density apple system, we are using a dwarfing rootstock. So this is a Geneva 41 rootstock grafted on a Liberty apple. And in this block right here, every single row is a different variety. So since Southwest Missouri is known for beef cattle production, there's not many orchards in our area. And there is very few apple orchards and not really much, not much research going on. So we are the first orchard in Southwest Missouri to put in this high density block. So we're trying out a lot of different, a lot of different varieties on different rootstocks, see how they're doing. But if you guys are familiar with the high density apple system, you plant them three foot apart and the row spacing is 12 foot apart. And the goal is to train the tree all the way to the top bar by the end of the second year. And these Liberty apples here, they are growing very vigorously. These are one years old and they're already almost close to seven foot tall here. And I'm just coming through, we tied a string here so we grow the leader straight so that whenever we come back in the spring and the summer when the tree are growing during the, the growing season, we're gonna go ahead and tie them up straightly and then the tree will fill out as the season progresses and as, and as the years come on. So today I am just coming through and we have these fancy vineyard gun and I'm coming through and just tying up the leader. So a tree like this, needs to be straight and we're gonna go ahead and tie it onto the, the string there and we're slowly and surely getting it done. We planted a thousand trees here and one tree at a time. That's what I keep telling myself. You know, it's a, lot, it's a lot of tedious work, but one tree at a time and we are getting it done. Alrighty, so I actually had to go to a farmer's market meeting and I just got back. My brother Adrian, he's been tying the strings ahead of me and he's already almost done with the, what row is that? The sixth row. And I'm just coming through and tying the, the, the trees with the fancy gun here. And he's got three rows left after that. I'm gonna go ahead and continue this. And it's going a lot faster than it was whenever I was doing these other four rows by myself. Alrighty, so row number five is done, the Liberties are done, and now I am on to the Fujis. And these are a lot, this is a very vigorous variety, and there's a lot more suckers and stuff coming off the bottom. And this is why the string is very important, because if the tree doesn't doesn't have this, the, um, the support going up, then it's gonna go ahead and give a bunch of suckers from the bottom. But since there's support from the top, it's just gonna shoot up straight vertically. So Adrian's on that side, tying the strings, I'm just coming along here fastly, getting stuff done. And slowly, surely, before we know it, I'm gonna have this row done of Fuji's, move on to the pink ladies and the grannies. So, slowly, surely, tree by tree, getting it done. So, one thing I am doing here, I am tying down these leaders. So, we can give the, the, the main trunk here. I'm tying down the feathers. These are called the feathers. So, the leader grows straight. And for example, like on one of the, like right here, I tied this down lane last spring. So, so whenever the, the cells inside this branch here form, if they're bent down, they're gonna stay like that. So this one doesn't have a string anymore. But as you can see here, these are fruiting buds here on the end, and this is gonna fruit. So whenever you tie the, the, the feathers down, it allows the fruiting spurs to come to form. So then that, that trunk gets nice and big and tall, and then you just have a bunch of side branches. 
and then in the future years to come whenever we're pruning whenever this branch is half of the size of this big one we're gonna go ahead and chop those off and let them renew but i'm gonna keep you guys informed and all that good stuff in the future but for now we just got to get them tied nicely So I am out here working on our food juice, like I mentioned earlier, and I came across a certain tree here, this particular tree, and this is what motivates me to plant high density apples. So this tree right here, we planted it in spring of 2019, we let it grow all season long, and then this year we're gonna go ahead and let it fruit. And look, just look at this tree right here. It is about six to eight inches more, hits the top wire, has a bunch of these fire, but look at all those fire buds. And Fuji is a tip bearing variety, a tip bearing variety. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it flower on the tips there. I gotta go ahead and pull this down. But this is what excites me because second year production, you can already go ahead and leave, leave these trees to harvest. These dwarfing rootstocks are very precocious, meaning they come in production, you know, a lot quicker. And this tree right here is a perfect example. And you know, it's super exciting. This is why we're gonna go ahead and continue planting high density apples. Second year. You know, you're gonna go ahead and leave 10 to 15 fruit on that tree in particular. And if all of the trees were like that, which, you know, there, there aren't because we live in, a, you know, not everything's perfect by the book. But let's hypothetically say you leave 10 to 15 fruit per tree in the second year times 1,200 trees to the acre. So let me pull out my calculator here real quick, do some quick math. So let's see here. So I've got my fancy calculator right now. So you just say 10, 10 fruit per tree times 20, 1,200 trees, that's 12,000 apples. And generally you leave about, you know, a good size of apples, 80, 80 apples per bushel, divide that by 80. So that's 150 bushels to the acre in the second year. And that is, so 150 bushels, divide that by 20. So that's seven and a half bins of apples in the second year. And generally, you know, compared to the traditional orchard style, you don't start producing a light crop like that until the third or fourth year. But that's just amazing. I mean, just look at, it's, it's just the beauty of a tree. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome, awesome, awesome. So I wish all of our trees were like that. But even this tree right here, it's not quite as tall, but we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and leave, you know, maybe one or two fruit on this tree because the goal is to have this leader hit the top wire by the end of the second year so that in the third year you could come and produce 500 bushels to the acre so exciting stuff i mean you can't beat it and like you guys realize those numbers i gave you is off this perfect tree and whenever the scientists and all those guys from the university that cornell university whenever they figure these numbers they say that a good healthy tree from the nursery is about five to six foot tall with a good amount of feathers on the tree but in reality you know we all know that that, that that doesn't always work and like for example the next row over we planted some pink ladies on a geneva 11 rootstock or geneva 41 i gotta look back in the notes it's pretty much the same same thing but those trees right now they're about three to four foot tall so you know whenever they came in they're about a foot tall so it depends on the, where the trees come from, but in reality, not all of the nurseries and it depends on different varieties as well. Not all the trees are as vigorous to hit that yield in the second year. But, you know, I, I was listening to a talk one time and the guy said that if you would hit 200 bushels to the acre in the second year, he would buy you a steak dinner. And, you know, to buy a premium tree like this from a nursery, you know, you're paying a good $12, $12.50 a tree compared to the smaller trees where you're spending less. But then if you calculate the yield in the second and third year, then it controverts itself back and forth. But, you know, the ideal tree whenever planting high density apples is, you know, five to six foot tall, get it to that seven to eight foot tall in the first year, come back in the second year, let them yield some and get to the top wire. So I don't know why I just got excited all of a sudden whenever I saw this first tree. But for example, right here, look at this tree. I mean, it was, it came from the same nursery 
it just it is barely hitting the second wire here and the second wire is i believe is two four foot tall so i wish all the trees were like that one right there but it doesn't always work and one thing we've got to keep in mind is that these fujis they're a vigorous variety a very vigorous variety i was talking to a farmer up north and he said you know if you don't let your fujis crop in the second year they just blow up and you get five foot of growth in the second year in the in, yeah in the second year towards the third year so it's kind of good we got a lot of flower buds so we can go ahead and let the trees just kind of do its own thing and we just got to come through and manage it and yeah i got i better get back to work because the longer i talk to you guys the less work i did and adrian's on the last grill of the arkansas black sir just kind of put me to shame of how much he's doing and i'm out here just talking to the camera <laughs> Alrighty, so now that the sun is going down, I'm gonna go ahead and have to go ahead in the greenhouse and close up the tomato plants. And by the time I get done, by the time I get done with the tomatoes, it's gonna be dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and head in for the night. And tomorrow I got classes all day. So that's the beauty of being a full-time college student and a farmer, you know. You, you can only get so much stuff done in one day before you have to go back. So it's uh time to go check on those tomatoes. Alrighty, so these are the tomatoes right here. As you guys seen my previous videos, you guys don't know. But so far, so good. I'm in this currently 40, it's close to 50 degrees in here, not too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and cover them for the night and start the fire and slowly and surely getting it done. So it is currently the next morning. I'm actually driving to school. And last night I was editing this video in particular. And I actually forgot that I didn't film an outro and ending to this video. So, this is going to be pretty much it for today. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go to smash that like button if you guys really enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit that notification icon so you guys can be notified whenever I do post a video. And if you guys can see here, we got them Real Farmer hats still in stock. So if you guys want some of those, go ahead and check them out at realfarmerdre.com or a link in the description box below i want to say thanks for watching up to this point you guys have a good day and we will see you next time